Look at that. Clipping warnings in Photoshop. Gosh, why didn't I come up with this sooner? This is amazing. I can't wait to show you how to do this. One of the things that I wish Photoshop really had in it were clipping warnings. And what a clipping warning is, is basically as you're editing your image, something that says, hey, if you do this, you're gonna make white in your image go to a blown out state or beyond 255 pixels, which makes it just pure white. Or on the flip side, it's gonna go to zero, which is pure black, and then you're going to make these inky black spots all over your image or these really bright blown out white spots in your image. By nature, Photoshop does not have this ability in there, and I think it's crazy. Now, I've come up with a way that you can actually have that feature in Photoshop, and I'm going to show you that. But let's dive in. I'll first talk about where you're going to see this outside of Photoshop. If you're working in Adobe Camera Raw or Lightroom, up here in the top portion of Adobe Camera Raw or Lightroom in the histogram, we have these triangles. It's a clipping warning. So if we turn this on, that's basically saying, hey, anything that shows up in blue here, this pure solid swatch of blue, that's something that we're deeming as being clipped or it's it's zero pixel values and is in the black range. OK, so if you go too much further with this edit, as we move this into the darker areas, we're going to see more and more blue. We turn this warning off. This is area that is basically unrecoverable. OK, it is recoverable with the slider on, but it's one of those things that you want to watch what you're doing while you do this, because if you do that, you could be creating these inky black spots that when you print are going to look very good. Or on the flip side, we turn this on. You're going to create these big splotches of white in your image that become distractions unless you print it on a really nice paper that has a nice grain to it. Sometimes that grain can fill in that spot for you, but we don't have that much success on the black side. So with that being said, how can we get this type of ability in Photoshop? Well, Photoshop by nature does not have this in there. So we kind of have to hack our way into it. Listen up real quick though. I got two things I want to talk to you about. Number one, I don't expect you to memorize all these things. So at the end of the video, I will have a download for you for an action that I've created for you, a series of actions I've created for you, or you'll find them in the description below. On the other side of that, I'm also going to show you how to do this on my blend if panel. Now, before all of the uh, naysayers come out of the woodwork on YouTube, as they usually do, chastising me for sharing something that I've created that makes your workflow more efficient. I don't know why you'd be upset by that, but I'm going to show you on my panel and then I'll show you in Photoshop. But I'm going to show you why it's more advantageous to do it on the blend if panel than it is to do it natively in blend if in Photoshop. So let's dive in and I'll talk about how you can create these things. So we, we want to recreate these blinky warnings or these that they're referred to as blinkies in our camera or these warnings in uh, Photoshop here. So to recreate this thing that we'd see in Adobe Camera Raw, I'm going to use both red and blue. So what I need here is I need a solid color fill. I'm going to make this the reddest of reds. It is going to be red 250 five zero green and zero blue we'll press ok now what i'm going to do on my blend if panel here is i'm going to change this to where it says zones now why zones because i like this zone representation here for this because it makes it really easy for me to determine what areas i'm most concerned with without having to deal with big numbers like zero and 255. What I want to do here is to make this show me what area is going to be zone 10. I just move this over to this way. And that shows me here on the blend if panel that only zone 10 is going to be where this red applies itself. If I did it this way, it would be zone uh, four through 10. Okay. But we want this to only be zone 10. Now, I do like this representation or this view of this, but if we see this, it's very jagged and very pixelated. So what I like about Blend Diff, and this is actually more, I think, beneficial than doing it in Adobe Camera Raw, is that I can take this and I can feather it over so there's a smooth transition between these pixel values. Because we're basically saying target pixel values 232 through 255. Well, what if I wanted to taper off, showing me the most potent of white? That would be the 255, and the least potent of white would be 232. So if I move this over this way and feather it, it will then show me that I'm really not blowing out as bad as it was representing, because like Adobe Camera Raw would show us there, it's only going to show us essentially what zone 10 is, which is 23 whole pixel values. Okay. So now let's do this again, but we're going to do this for the shadows. So I'm going to add a solid color fill here. We are going to make this the bluest of blue. So we're going to make that zero and then 255 for blue and press OK. We'll call this shadows. Now what I want to do is I want to make sure that this is only targeting the shadow areas. So I'm going to either reload my panel here or I could double I could click off of that layer and then back on that layer. But we'll go into the zones here. And then with this, we're going to move this all the way over here like this 
so that we are only targeting zone zero in our image. So this is showing us in our image that this is where we should be worried about, that if we take this image too far, then these areas are gonna go to that inky black look that we might not want. But I do wanna feather this over again, because this is zero to 23. So if I move this over, it's gonna be a zero to 23 transition, which then shows me that we really aren't as bad as we were. Now, what I really like about this is that you could put this on at the top of your workflow before you start doing anything in Photoshop to make sure you're not gonna have any clipping in your image or artistic, I'd say outside of artistic decisions. Sometimes you do want things to be high key or low key. And in that case, you're gonna have some clipping. But if you're just working on a natural image and you don't want anything high key or low key, this is great because watch this. I could put, let's say a curves adjustment layer on here and watch as I move this down, everything starts to get more blue where I'm starting to approach that clipped area to even see this better. If we move this over just like this, that's basically saying, Hey, anything that's in the midtone value, make it zero which essentially is showing us that this is getting very dark, okay? Because it's a solid blue swatch. Likewise, on the other side of this, if we move this over, we are now clipping our highlights over and we are doing destructive things to our image that we will not be very happy with. Actually, we might be happy with it, but the internet will not. They will tell you very quickly that they're not happy with your blowouts or your shadow clippings, okay? So I did say I'm gonna show you this in Blendif. And the reason why I do like it on the Blendif panel though is because we have the zone transition here. We do have to remember that a zone, any zone is 23 pixel values because 23 times 11 gives you approximately 255. So let's do this. Let's put a solid color fill on top of here. Uh, we'll do this for the blues, so we'll make it, or the, the shadows, I should say. So we'll make it zero, zero, and press OK. Now, in order to do this with Blendif inside of Photoshop without my panel, you would double click on this. And once you double click on this, you would move this over to get to the darkest dark areas, which would get us at pixel value of 23. So we're basically saying here, nothing underneath this that is in the highlight area into the midtones and then into the darkest darks is not getting affected by this blue effect. If we press alt or option and move that over, it will feather it. So we get that same look that we had with the blend if panel and the blend if naturally it's the exact same thing. Okay. Now I just like having my blend if panel here because it makes it right there in the properties. We don't have to double click anything to get into blend if like you normally would. It's kind of annoying to have to double click on that. And quite honestly, you're more than likely going to forget to use it. That's why I created the Blendif panel and a full course called the Unrivaled Blendif to go along with it. If you're interested in that course, it will be in the description of this video below. I'm not going to put it in the links at the end because I want to give you the action at the end. Like I said, I made a series of actions for you, so I'll show you that now too. If we open up the play here, we have two different types of warnings. We have it on white and we have it regularly. If we do it regularly, we're gonna press play on this find brights. It's basically going to show us the bright clippings. If we press play on the find darks, it's gonna do the exact same thing. That way you don't have to memorize this stuff. I do think it's important that you know what's happening though, okay? Let me show you the other action that's in here. This other action is finding those brights or those darks on white. So I'll press play on this. Now what this is gonna do is it's going to give you a better representation of the colors here uh, without showing you the distractions of what's happening on the rest of the image. Now this is a little bit of a hack, okay? What I had to do essentially was create a curves adjustment layer here and go all the way over to that 232 pixel value here with the darks. And then I had to put a gradient map on top of that to give you a representation of what that would look like. Now you can still work with this either way. If you put a curves adjustment layer on here and go brighter, it's gonna show you the same thing, just like it would if it was actually on the image. The only difference between this, these two actions I will say, is that you cannot have both of them on at the same time. If we do find darks on white, and then we turn this one on, you're gonna get some really interesting things that happen here. So it's either you have the find darks on, or you have the find brights on and that's really all you can do with the ones that are on white but it does become a little bit easier for you to see where those those areas in your image might be blown out let's talk about one more thing that i really like about this i'll go ahead and press play on the fine brights okay just go and press play there press play on the fine darks and this is why i like this because if i copy these because this is blend if based if i press Control c and then i go over to another image that i'm working on here press Control v I will be able to see really quickly what is going to be clipped. Now, looking at this image, I ultimately assumed that this would be a clipped area here. But what's telling me here is that this is actually not clipped. It's not clipped in that area. 
because we don't have any warning coming up. Now, if I were to put a levels adjustment on here, and let's just say we do something like this, we bring this up here, that's gonna make it darker, so we start to see that blue. If I move the midtones to the left, that's where we actually start to see clipping in these areas or areas that are becoming pure white. Now, the reason why I like that this is blend diff base is because we can transport this onto any image. It doesn't care if that's a portrait. It doesn't care if it's a landscape. It doesn't care if it's a bird flying through the air because all it cares about are what pixel values are zero to 23 or 232 to 255. This blend if panel is revolutionizing a lot of people's workflow. This course comes with also 10 lessons on how I use blend if beyond what I just showed you here. Click on the link in the description. It'll take you right to that page so you can start using that blend if panel today. If you don't want the panel, you just want my actions. No problem. That's also in the description below. And also you can find that right here. I want to thank you for taking the time to watch this. I do sincerely appreciate it. If you haven't done so already, please consider subscribing. I like to take very difficult things in Photoshop and make them seemingly simple so that you can use them in your workflow today, just like these actions I've provided for you.